Okay, guys, this will be AP Statistics. Uh, still doing our significance testing, section 9.2, this time for proportions. Um, we'll see the process is exactly the same as we did with means in 9.3, which we covered first, um, with just a couple slight changes, like the standard deviation is different and the, the normal condition is different. But everything else, same thought process. So should not be too new or, or surprising. So let's look at an example. Um, let's say we have, um, there we go, a company who is willing to renew its advertising contract with the local radio station, um, only if the station can prove that more than 20% of the residents um, have heard the ad. Okay, so it's it's proving something about a percentage of people with a certain characteristic. Okay, in this case, hearing the ad. So, so that's my clue that this is a proportion. Okay, the twenty percent there. Um, so what they would do is uh, get a sample. So they did that. Let's say they have a random sample of four hundred people, and they found that ninety have heard the ad and recognized the product. And they want to know is this sufficient evidence to uh, renew the contract? Basically, can they can they conclude that more than 20% have heard based on that sample value? And we're going to use the common alpha of 0.05. Okay, so uh, basically we we want to write our statements here, and then we'll check conditions, um, or you can check conditions first. But um, the the statements basically again the HO the null hypothesis always assuming that the parameter equals. Um, whatever specific value you're talking about. So in this case, the parameter note is P. It's not a mu. It's not a means problem. It's P for proportion, um, and it's going to equal the 0.2. Okay, so just keep in mind, again, that P is for a population proportion. It's not the P value that we will get at the end here. Um, but they use the same letter, obviously, so be careful there. Um, and the alternative, of course, is going to be that P is greater than 0.2. That's the one the company wants to see if there's evidence for. Um, so they want to see, are we going to reject HO or not? Okay, so we must define, just to be clear, especially in this case when the P can mean so many different things, um, this is defining the parameter. So make sure you do that for any significance test. Um, P, of course, is the true proportion of listeners who heard the ad. Okay, so then what we want to do if, before we do this, if we're going to use any sort of uh, normal assumption or normal curve to get areas and stuff, um, we need to check the conditions. So this one's different. It's not a sample size being 30. Um, that only works for means. Okay, so this one has to deal with n times p being greater than or equal to 10 and n times 1 minus p um, greater than or equal to 10. So in this case, n's 400. That was our sample size. Um, p, just be careful, we, we were in the habit of using p hat when we did confidence intervals. Um, but here we actually have um, an assumption of what p is, right? Look at that null hypothesis. So we're assuming that p is actually 0.2. We always assume HO is true. Um, and in either case, that both of those numbers are going to be greater than or equal to 10. Okay, we're expecting more than 10 people to hear the ad and more than 10 people to not hear the ad. That's essentially what these are doing for us. Um, so the normality is good to go. Randomness, I think they just told us straight up, random sample. Um, and the independent, a lot of times you have to assume, but you still need to write that. So we're going to assume if our sample size was 400, um, we will assume there's at least 10 times that many people in the population. Okay, um, so that's the, uh, the other condition there where we can safely assume there are more than 4,000 listeners. Okay, so the conditions are met and we are good to go and start doing the process. So let's look at this and set this uh, situation up real quick. So let me go to my other slide here. So don't look at that yet. We didn't do the calculator method yet, but we will in one second. Um, so basically, just to kind of recap, we have HO is that P equals 0 0.2. HA was that P is um, greater than 0 0.2. Okay, and from our sample, they said 90 out of the 400 had heard the ad. So if you do the calculations on that, it's about 0.225. Okay, so that's going to be our P hat value. So what we do, um, draw the model, assuming HO is true. Okay, we, we said we can use normal. Um, we're going to assume that the center, okay, or the, the mean, um, but again, it's a proportion, but the, the mean of the curve is 0.2. Okay, so again, this is the sampling distribution um, for samples of size 400. Okay, so we're assuming that's 0.2. We got a sample value we can see of larger than that, 0.225. So our p value is going to be this area in the um, upper tail here, and it's going to be a normal CDF problem. Okay. Um, one other thing to keep in mind, remember we all, we only use normal with proportions. We don't have to worry about the T curve. T is only used for means problems when sigma is unknown. 
Okay, it's the only time in here we'll use T. So proportions are always C or normal curves. Okay, so let's set up our normal CDF, get an, uh, an area in here. We'll do a norm CDF. If we look at where we shaded, we started as the left bound of 0.225 and we went up unbounded, so big number. Um, we assumed the mean was 0.2 and now the standard deviation, okay, we do have a formula for that. It's the square root of P, okay, from, from the null hypothesis. Don't use P hat here, use actual P. Um, one minus P is 0.8 over the uh, sample size of 400. Okay, and if you do the calculations there, I was ending up with something around a point, uh, 0.1056, something like that. Okay, so that's actually gonna be the area shaded up here. Or basically there's a 10, a little over 10 and a half percent chance of getting um, a value above 0.225 if the mean is really 0.2, okay? So we would make our conclusion um, again, that's the p-value that we just found. Maybe we should label that. And we would say, um, I think they wanted us to use alpha was 0.05. That's the common one. Um, so in this case, um, we would say something like since p is greater than alpha, okay, that means the thing that happened was, was fairly likely to happen if HO is true. Okay, so we're going to fail to reject HO. Okay, and then just getting back to context here, okay, we're failing to reject HO, okay, remember what our, our HO was, so we're kind of going with this guy, okay, and again, we don't, we haven't proved that it's true or anything, but we basically have, have not proved that it's not true either, so we're kind of going with it, so is there evidence then that HA is true? No, there's no evidence for that, okay, our sample even though it was 0.225, our sample proportion, based on this information and the sample size and all the other variables in there, we don't have enough evidence to, to conclude that P is actually greater than 0.2. Okay, so that would be your final statement here. Um, there's not evidence that um, P is greater than 0.2. So the company should not renew the contract. because that's kind of what they were looking for in order to renew, uh, should not renew. And that's the conclusion we're looking for in context. Okay, so that's the steps. That's very similar to what we've done um, in class with means problems. Um, I did want to show you the calculator step. Basically, you can do um, the, the whole normal CDF step and basically get the p-value a lot quicker. So it doesn't really save you a ton of time. We're going to be using these calculator tricks a little more next chapter when things get more complicated. Um, but this can actually be done on the calculator um, using what's called a one proportion z-test. Okay, so I'm going to show you that in just one second. I think last chapter we may have done one proportion z-intervals. Um, but in this case, when you have the HO and the HA, you're testing a claim, you're doing an actual test, not an interval. So let's let's get that set up real quick. Okay, that's actually in the PowerPoint, but I'll show you where it is. It's under um, the stat button on your calculator, over to tests, just where, where all the interval stuff was. Um, and again, a lot of this stuff looks the same. Um, so let me just kind of give you a quick rundown. These two will be used in, in 9.3, okay? So that's basically, we, we had done the problems a long way where we did a normal CDF or a TCDF to do tests about means. Okay, um, and we'll do a little bit more in class, but um, for this current section, it's right here, one proportion uh, Z test. Okay, so with using the calculator, you have to be able to separate all of these different tests and intervals, and that's kind of the tricky part. But we'll see, it is gonna save us some time. So let's go in there, kind of see how that works. So if you go in there, basically, um, it's going to ask you for some things here. And this P0, that's kind of like asking you the zero there is the null. It's like, what was the value of HO? So for us, it was 0.2. Um, our X, our number of successes was 90 out of 400. Okay, that's your X and your N. 
Um, and then what are you testing? The proportion, this is basically asking what was your no, your alternative hypothesis, I should say. And in our case, it was a greater than, because we wanted to be greater than, you know, comparing it to this, greater than 0.2, right? And we're just going to go ahead and do, you can either do calculator draw. I think it's kind of cool to do the draw, because it will actually draw the curve for you and show you everything you need. So let's see what that does. And it's working hard. And hopefully that eventually pops up here. There it goes. So there's our normal curve, and it's going to start shading, and it's going to give us a couple of cool things here. Um, here's the p-value that we got from the norm CDF, so that's the shaded region up here. Um, it also gives you this value of the test statistic, okay, which again would just be the value minus the mean over the standard error. So we talked about that with means the other day when we did, when you do tCDFs, you have to find that, remember? So let's go on what's going on here. And then you make your conclusions the same way. Um, so you're free to do that way. If you do it that way, just tell me that you're doing a one proportion z-test. Still show me the conditions, still show me basically everything else, except you don't have to show me the norm CDF step. Okay, so that was the way I actually finished it in the PowerPoint here. Um, so those are in the slides. Okay, and, and we made our conclusion we kind of already talked about. So just to see it again there. Um, put that up there we go so we failed to reject ho so there's not sufficient evidence uh to renew the claim basically like we just said okay so let's walk through one other one real briefly um just so you can kind of see the, the calculator set up again um so let's say example two among 703 randomly selected workers 373 got their jobs through networking um use this data to test the claim that most okay so we're gonna need more than 50 percent um, of workers got their job through networking. Okay, so we do the same kind of process. We're going to set up our statements. Again, the, the null hypothesis that P equals 0.05. Um, alternative is the claim we're testing. Is it greater than 0.05? In um, the conditions, I believe, were met um, very similar to what we did in the, in the previous video or previous example, if you wanted to run back through those real quick. Um, but just to show you an effort to save a, a couple minutes here. Um, you could do the same kind of thing, very, very similar. Um, so I would encourage you to practice or type that along. You get a p-value of 0 0.05. Um, and then since that p-value is greater than 0 0.05, again, we would fail to reject HO um, just like before. Okay, so there would not be sufficient evidence to go with HA. And that is that. So again, thought process is, is very, very similar to, uh, to any significance test. Um, and hopefully that will get you through 9-2. Uh, don't worry about the assignment. We're not going to do something different. All right.